Okay, shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is what it feels like. Yeah, it was. I was up, y'all couldn't hear me. I was up here talking shit, but y'all couldn't hear me. Can I, I can cuss? Oh, is that, okay, for sure. I, I know we in college. I had my jacket on and shit, because y'all know white people like to have the air conditioner on inside. Cold as fuck. My, I, had, I had a white nigga that was my uh, roommate. And that nigga used to keep the air on. It'd be 10 degrees. I'm like, hey, my nigga. <laughs> We, we, we need heat, my nigga. It's heat. It's heat. It's, it, I ain't saying it's too cold. We need heat outside, but you know, I came prepared. You know what I mean? I've been with this motherfucker for my whole life, so I know. I've been in rooms with him. <laughs> this is my brother, so I know he likes the temperature a bit down. So, you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> been a long time. <laughs> I haven't been here probably since like 2010, 2011. Not on purpose. I, just, I don't live here anymore. <laughs> I think the last time you was here, we was talking on um, uh, AOL Instant Messenger. Yep. I remember his, his name was like, his, uh, it was Nebo, Nebo it was, 75 or something. It was like Ben backwards. Mine was like Big Tip 85 or something. It was like my foot, that was some stupid shit. And like my football number. And I was like sending this nigga stuff. I couldn't send him a song yet, so I couldn't prove to him that I could rap. I, was I think you would, about it. you would post them on your MySpace. Oh, nah, it was, that was before MySpace. Friendster. No, I didn't even have that shit. Oh. I ain't had nothing but Instant Messenger and you. <laughs> you my only friend. And I lost, I lost my uh, berkeley.edu email, so I lost a lot of those files. So. Hey, it was some trash shit, trust me. <laughs> Those first, that first wave of Freddie Gibbs rap was very, very trash. It, you know, that's, that's pretty what, good. That, pretty good. Why do you think that when they introduced this nigga, his his uh, introduction was so fuck his resume was so long. He didn't do a <laughs> lot of work. Like I was like, he had to really believe. You know what I mean? And, and you know, me and me and his story is just more than I, I would say it's more than a business story. It's like a friendship story because I don't even know too many niggas. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep cussing. I'm sorry. It's an educational facility. Well, yeah, yeah, my bad. I don't know too many people, and I'm an educated nigga. <laughs> but I don't know too many people that, you know what I mean, have been in this business this long and had the same um, manager. Because, you know, being more than my manager, you know, like I said, he's my, you know, one of my best friends. And I, it, you know, it's, it, it's a different kind of thing because we kind of like, I don't know, we grew up in this game together. It's like, you know, we didn't never, uh, we, we didn't have shit to begin with, you know what I mean? He wasn't like no hot shot manager with, you know, a, a, a list of clientele, and I definitely wasn't no A-list rapper at all, you know? I was a nigga in Gary in the alley with $10 crack bags. And I was a Berkeley sophomore on Blake and Telegram. Right. <laughs> <laughs> on Instant Messenger. On, on Instant Messenger. <laughs> Luckily, my mama had the internet. We wasn't too poor, you know what I'm saying? We was just enough. We had we, we had that dial up. You ever, are y'all niggas old enough to know what dial up is? Next? You know what that was? You was probably like two or three when they had like, you know what I mean? Before you get on the internet, so you couldn't creep on that shit. You couldn't just get on your phone, man. Oh, let me stop. I sound old. I think I had really a I had a Motorola Razor. You had a Motorola Razor? I think so. I don't even think I had. I just had a beeper when I was talking to you. <laughs> We just fucking him up. He like, <laughs> he, like track, he like, hello, He like, hello. I actually want to talk a little bit more about that come up where you went together. Um, uh, and you said that you know, like Gary you know, was talking to in the industry with hip hop that definitely local flavor. It was like the New York scene, the Chicago scene, the kind of area, uh, you know, Southern scene. How did you and Ben approach carving out a place for yourself in the industry away from the traditional hubs? Wow, never thought about it. No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think we just always did our own thing. We never followed what anybody else was doing, and that's always what we've done to this day. And sometimes we probably were a little ahead of 
potentially where people could understand it, and other times we didn't necessarily have the resources of everybody else. But in doing it that way, eventually it kind of caught up to what we were doing, I think. And yeah, I mean, what do you think? What I think, okay. I think that uh, uh, up in, like when I started rapping, um, uh, it was like rap was kind of more, um, how can I say it, in the, um, geographical. It was like you had to like be from somewhere or from something or with something. You had to be something like that. Because when I was um, signing the Interscope, <clears throat> the problem with me or why they didn't want to like push forward on like putting a, um, an album out on me because all the executives in the building would be like, well, where is he from? And then they'd be like, uh, Gary, Indiana. And they'd be like, well, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, Indiana, like, what the fuck? Are we going to put him with the Indiana Hoosiers, nigga? Like, what? how are we going to market this shit? They looked at me, they, didn't, they, they, they heard the word Indiana, and they was like, damn, what the fuck, Larry Bird? Like, what the fuck do we do? You know what I mean? So it was a very difficult thing, you know what I mean? And, you know, which eventually led to that record label dropping me because they didn't know how to market, you know, at me, me at that time, I didn't. I was just like, uh, they was like, is he from LA? Is he from New York? Is he from Atlanta? It was like, if you weren't from one of those like main city hubs during the time, it was difficult for you as an artist, you know what I mean? Because, you know, they wouldn't want to, you know, no, 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 rec you know, you know, record labels, man, it's a real copycat built in formula, you know what I mean? So it's like, they didn't want to uh, invest in something that wasn't already going. And, and it's the same thing to this day. You know what I mean? It's just that the geographical part has been taken out of it. Now it's like a rapper, like if you ask a rapper, like you could be like, yo, if I ask you where you're from, you'd be like, nigga, I'm from the internet. I'm, like, from, I'm from Grand Theft Auto. Exactly, it don't even matter. You know what I mean? Like, you know, 10, 15 years ago, when I was doing this shit and trying to get signed to a record label, you really had to be from somewhere. It was very geographical because the record label had to tap into um, the the local radio, the program director, they had to tap into the local DJ, all and of that follow, stuff. Follow a cosign of somebody yeah, else from that place. Exactly. It was more so of a, a ground roots type of thing. But now with the internet, it's like, I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? We could make anybody from anywhere. Like, like the most popular rappers these days, I don't even know where the fuck they from. They could be from uh, Nebraska. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wisconsin. I don't know where the fuck <laughs> motherfuckers be from. So you did find most of your success away from the major label system after spending nearly two decades as an independent artist. Um, Damn, nigga, two decades. <laughs> 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 it's not like a jail sentence. <laughs> <laughs> your rap career is older than most people here. Yes, it, it is. That's crazy. <laughs> Your, uh, your new last album, Soul Soul Separately. Just curious what influenced your decision to return to such a big system that you've been a part of for so long? The money. <laughs> nah, I mean, honestly, to be honest, um, uh, I mean, yeah, it was the money. I would it say relationships too. That too. And the money. <laughs> like, it was a lot, like, because, you know, them motherfuckers was disrespecting me my whole career, dog. That, like, I, I was trying to get a record deal my whole career, dog. Think about that. My whole career, I was trying to get a record deal. I didn't have no record deal. I invented this being independent, being like uh, getting your uh, your streaming money, all of that shit. Nobody knew how to do that shit before I did that. You know, I kind of innovated something. You know, being from Gary, Indiana, but I probably I probably won't get the credit for that because of where I'm from. If I was from you know, a bigger city maybe, then yeah, you know what I mean? But for the most part, what, what, me, and, what me and Lambo was doing was, it was kind of unheard of, you know? Like, the industry been trying to step on me my whole career, you know? They been trying, it's like, it's like I'm something that just will not die. They're like, fuck, like people see me, it'd be like <laughs> executives, they'd be like, damn, he's still around, like what the fuck is going on, you know what I mean? So it was just like, you know, I, I spent my whole life, I mean my whole career, trying to be a rapper, man, you know? And I 
I turn it into something profitable on my own, you know, and you say I went back to the major labor system, shit, them motherfuckers came back to me, you know, I didn't go back to them, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, I made that shit flip all the way back around, you know what I mean, because like, you know, for two decades, nigga, you know what I'm saying, like, I was, you know, I was kind of like, you know, I was in the street, man, you know, really with this, you know, this thing had to be, um, you know, it had to be backed by something, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have no backing from nobody. What was I gonna do? Call home and call my mama, you know, and ask her for a loan? I couldn't do that, you know. So it's like, you know, we had to do what we had to do, you know, to get where we at. And um, I just think everything comes full circle, you know. Um, I see, you know, it's guys that was uh, signing me in 2006, and now they like asking me to borrow money. You know what I mean? So it's like. It, on the way up, man, you always got to treat everybody the same way, dog. You know what I mean? Like, when I walk in a room, I treat the janitor the same way as I treat the CEO, you know, with the same amount of respect. Because one day that janitor might be the CEO, a rose flip, you know? And I see a lot of motherfuckers on the way up coming down, you know, more of them coming down, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's, it, it's crazy, man. So, you know, it's just, you know, I just feel like you got to, you really got to keep a set of morals in this game because this shit will strip it away from you if you don't. Got that. This, mic this microphone pinching my titties, but it's cool. Though. It's cool. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga was just talking about some real shit. <laughs> 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 Jerry, Jerry has a way, uh, or, or, or is an independent artist who incredibly prolific. Um, releasing albums, so Fredo and Dana. Doing those albums, you primarily uh, collaborated with a single producer. Um, and your players release souls so separately, you collaborate with the block and your producers. Um, how does working with this many producers as opposed to one influence the creative direction of your albums? You want that to be? I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's we kind of have to like create the the building, you know, and then it's like whether it's one producer or multiple, it still has to kind of fit, you know, like each room has to fit the house. So I feel like, you know, a lot of people nowadays, just how it is, like albums aren't as prestigious or as important as they were. So people don't really care about that anymore. It's like, let me just put 30 songs out there and none of them have to be related. And I feel like we came up in the 90s, like as kids, both of us. And back then, like back in my day, you know, when I used to walk in the snow to Berkeley, no. Um, <laughs> albums were like these, it was like a movie, like getting an Outkast album or a Tribe Called Quest album or a Far Side album or a Tupac album or whatever. It was like a cohesive body of work. And sometimes those albums had one producer, sometimes they had 10 producers, but the executive production, which is always what we kind of do from start to finish, it's always gonna feel like a cohesive thing. You know what I mean? Um, whether it's a bunch of people playing a role in it or one beat maker, you know? Right. And... Go ahead. <laughs> Two decades, nigga. No, but... <laughs> nah, I think that, um, I think that, because well, um, like I was gonna say this, like I got like, I, I was at a show, um, damn, where was I at? I wanna say Baltimore or some shit like that, I don't remember, but it was like recent. And like, I was walking that stage and I was, I was high as fuck, I'm gonna keep it real, I ain't need a lot of y'all niggas. I was high, I was drunk as hell, and then, and I was coming down the hallway, I was smoking the blunt shit, I was getting them, I was getting ready for the show, I was like, yeah, nigga, I'm on that shit, nigga, I'm high as hell. And then I see this, like, 12-year-old kid, and I immediately had to, like, I was like, oh, shit, you know what I mean? Because, like, now I got kids, I got kids, you know what I mean? Like, you know, my youngest is three, so, like, so I, I be looking at kids now and I be like, what the fuck? Like, damn, Fred, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know what I mean? Like, and like the kid was like, yo, I've been listening to you since, I said, nigga, you just got potty trained. <laughs> How the fuck you been listening to me? You know what I mean? So it's like, and it like, and, 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 on, and on the same token, like I went to the coffee shop the next morning and it was a nigga, that, it was an old white nigga that was like 65. He was like, Freddie Gibbs. So I was like, nigga, you don't know me. <laughs> no way you know me, my nigga. 
and he was like, yes, I do. And then they took a picture with me and then he FaceTimed his daughter and shit. And it's like, man, you know, you, you never know the range of people, you know what I mean, that you touch. So it's just like, you know, I feel like um, what me and Lambo bring, you know, and I might not sell as many records as Drake or J. Cole or Kendrick or nothing like that. But when all them niggas walk in the room, they got to respect you, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think that what we do as far as, you know, bringing, you know, to the to the rap game and to the music table, I feel like, like he just said, like, when he used to walk through the snow at Berkeley, he had to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be in the Lambo, I mean, not the Lambo, the Volvo with crack too. We gonna talk about that later, but anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but, 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 but you know what I mean? Like, okay, so when he used to walk through the snow in Berkeley, he had to go get CDs to put in the CD player. And, you know, <laughs> that brings me back to my original point. I think that what we bring to the table, we make the music thing more, something tangible, you know, even with our vinyls. Like, even the flyer that y'all made for this thing, like, y'all put... The pinata. Nah. Where that shit at? It's the pinata zebra. Nah, nigga, not that. Oh, oh. What that shit at? Let me see the poster for the shit. God damn, now y'all making me look crazy. All right, okay, look. Okay, look, you see, nigga, how y'all put, niggas put all the albums on there. That's the thing, you know? Because this rapper's now, they probably got like 50 of these. You wouldn't have put that shit on the motherfucking shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I saw that before I saw anything. I mean, I saw myself naked on there too, but I saw like all the, all the albums. And I was like, oh, that's like, it's like a trophy case, you know what I mean? So it's just like, like I said, like everything we do, we try to make it something tangible, you know what I mean? And I think that extra effort and that, you know, um, that shit goes a long way, you know, in a, in a project, you know? I think that... Uh, Especially in like an intangible world. Correct. Where everything is kind of like digital and disappears and you might never see it again. Ooh, sexy. <laughs> Like it's it's cool to have like a library of things and you can point to each one and you kind of know if, if you're knowledgeable about it. Like if you listen to it or you heard it all, you kind of know what each one represents and like you can describe it in a sentence or a word. You know, um, that's important to us. Marketing. marketing. Did, did you go to school here for that? What's the marketing? I, went, I, I was mass comm. The marketing department is a motherfucker here that got this nigga. Anybody mass comm? Mass comm. Damn, nobody. Is this all Damn. business? What, what, are, what are your majors? Y'all go flunk. History. History. <laughs> History major? Yes, sir. Damn, okay. Are you studying uh, the beginning of Freddie's rap career, the primitive times? <laughs> <laughs> Two decades. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a big part of what I think makes uh, your work feel tangible um, is um, sort of influences that you, that you seem to, to draw from. In a recent conversation, you talked about a conversation with uh, Ben and David Richie Rich, where he credited your rap prowess the fact that you grew up on music in general rather than just rap. Could you elaborate on how this thing's a wide range of music genres influence your approach to music? Um, I think that um, I feel like you can't really like make um, rap without knowing about, um, it's like knowing your history, you know? You gotta know where you came from and know where you're going. So, I, um, and you know, my parents, you know, uh, people around me, you know, growing up, just was always listening to, you know, good music. So, I feel like that always gave me a good ear, especially my dad, you know, my dad sang my whole life, you know, in like groups like the Shy Lights and stuff like that. So he, it was, um, I don't know, I guess you would say it's in me, man. You know, I, I never, um, throughout my um, childhood or um, even through high school or anything, like plan on being a rapper at all. This was never nothing that I was like, oh man, I wanna be a rapper. You know, one day, you know, one of my friends uh, made an album and shit, I was working at Payless. The, for real, that shoe store with the niggas, yeah, with the janky ass shoes, I was working at that shit. Cause my uncle was working there and I was, I just got kicked out of college, fucking up. And then, like, this nigga came in there, and that nigga had, um, he had a CD. And this is a motherfucker from Gary, Indiana. And when I say a CD, not just, you know, uh, uh, not just a disc. He had, like, the whole wrap and the barcode on it. It was in plastic. It was, like, it had a cover on it and everything. And it was all bullshit. 
It was trash as fuck. I'll tell the nigga every day that shit was trash. But he, but the, but the actual um, having the, the the business notion to actually go through that whole process and do that, that's what fascinated me. Not the nigga rapping, because the nigga couldn't rap. You know what I'm saying? That's my homeboy. I love him. Though. He couldn't rap. But but the, the fact that he did that, that sparked me. And I was like, damn, what I got to do to do that? You know what I mean? So, you know, when I, when, so that, that um, first fascination with the music industry, you know, really made me, I was like, I, I, I didn't know what place I wanted to play in. And I was like, should I be um, uh, a manager? I wanted to be with, I wanted to do a land post. I was like, should I be like a, should I be a DJ? Should I be, I didn't know. I definitely knew I couldn't be a beat maker because I ain't good with machines and I, I can't even play video games. Y'all can fuck me up on Call of Duty, all that shit. I'm trash. You know what I'm saying? So I know I can't do shit like that. That, that ain't my forte. So I just had to figure it out. And, you know, I started hanging around rappers in like most of in my city during that time in the um, early 2000s. It was like the only guys that had studios was drug dealers, you know. So I was already in that world. So kicking it with them, they wanted to be rappers, you know what I mean? So I was just like, I would look at those guys that had money for studio time, basically waste their money <laughs> on like rapping all night long. And I'm like, damn, what the fuck is that? You know what I mean? Like, damn, that's crazy. Until one day I watched enough and got tired of watching and I just mastered it myself. And I was like, man, all these niggas trash, I'm better than all them. <laughs> Let me just do this shit instead of watching them waste their money, you know, let me really, you know, do something real with it, and I did it, and once I put my mind to it, I didn't stop at all. <laughs> God damn, y'all ain't have to clap for this shit. <laughs> That's real shit, though. I appreciate it. You, you emphasize the role of marketing, um, kind of getting me where you are today. Um, you know, I think it's important. Uh, ben, you also kind of grew around the music industry. In an older interview, you mentioned how your uncles were where the Grateful Dead shaped your preference was, was kind of slow birth success or was kind of nothing. And you mentioned feeling kind of ahead of the curve as far as um, like marketing strategies goes. How has this approach shaped your material relationship with Ray? Um, I mean, I grew up like going to Grateful Dead concerts because my parents lived in Berkeley like in the 70s and they came up in that whole scene. My uncle, my dad, my mom. So I just grew up like following all that and, and then in high school my sister was into like indie rock while I was into rap. So I just like kind of saw that you can you can have a huge following without being like on the radio or on MTV or like because back back then like it was really the radio and MTV. It was like these two central places to kind of get all your your cult your pop culture, you know, your music culture. But there was all these other successful groups and bands going on that like weren't in that, that I discovered you know, later as a teenager. And I feel like in rap, it's always been like, if you're not hot or you're not on the radio, it's like people are like, people don't know what box to put you in. Like, oh, you're not a star, you're not, you're not popping or you're not, you know, you're not the biggest thing. But in, in other genres, like, you can have a long 40 year career without ever having a hit record. The Grateful Dead didn't have a hit song until like 1987 or 86. And they were around since the 60s. So it's like, if you look outside of like the box that they try to put you in, you can see that there's other ways of doing everything. And, and we kind of always looked at it this way since we linked up. And I feel like now that it's like that's with streaming and just, you can be huge now on streaming and I might not recognize you walking down the street, but you have a core fan base. And I feel like things have caught up to that now where you can have a super successful career, make as much if not more money than people that are on the radio. And we were thinking about that like 14 years ago. You know? I definitely got more money than people that know the radio. <laughs> Broke ass niggas. I be like, yo, when your contract up, you know what I'm saying? It be, you know, and, 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 and I don't say that to, you know, I say that because, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, that it's a flex, but it's more of a statement of perseverance. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I kind of like took the long road. That's why when I see motherfuckers get shit too quick, I'd be like, fuck you, nigga. You don't know. Because once, once you get it quick, you have to keep getting it. Yeah. You don't know what it takes. You know what I mean? So it's just like, man, every, 
every 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 fucking thing in this game that I got, I earned it, man, tooth and nail. You know what I mean? I fought for it. That's why I don't take shit for granted at all. That's why I don't I don't take this job for granted. You know what I mean? I don't piss off my career. I don't take a day of this shit. I ain't late for no meetings. I ain't, you know what I mean? I don't miss no fucking studio sessions. I don't miss no shows. I don't cancel shit because I know in the blink of an eye, all of this shit can be gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, people ask me, like, like, I'd be out and then, like, people would be like, damn, man, like, why do you, like, stop and, like, take every picture with everybody? Because shit, I remember when a motherfucker didn't want to take no picture with me. You know? And having to go home and think about that, you know. So it's just like I rather, you know, get a love back than, you know, sit there and take it for granted. So I don't do that. So it seems like your your career to this point has required an incredible amount of perseverance to keep sticking with it through everything. Um, I'm very you've described your creative process as kind of therapeutic. Um, your lyrics often paint very vivid pictures of some of these hardships and like trials that you've been through. How did you kind of develop the sort of introspective capacity to like, translate these experiences into compelling lyrics? Um, I don't know. You know what? Um, you know, shit. I grew up listening to Tupac and Scarface, and you know, you know, got guys from that range. Um. Man, I'm going to tell you the truth, man. I'm going to tell you all honest to God the truth. I wish, I wish that I can get up and rap about some other shit. I wish that I could have, like, made a career about, of rapping about some funny shit or being some kind of, I don't know, rapping about girls all the time or, I don't know, rap a comedic or any fucking thing. But this shit. You know, I wish that I could, every day I think about that, I wish that I, you know, had a rap career where I was like, I don't know, shit, one of them, I, I don't want to name no niggas, you know what I'm saying, but, like. Effort, right, effortless. Yeah, nah, not effortless. I mean, like, not gangster, you know. Like, I don't want this shit for myself. I don't want this shit for my son. You know what I'm saying? I rap about this shit because it's, it's it, it consumed me, you know, it, it, it is what it, 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 it's where, it's where I'm from, it's what I was doing on the daily for two decades, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, um, I, I don't love it, I don't love the streets, I don't give a fuck about no street code, I don't give a fuck about none of these niggas in the street, like, I don't, I don't want to sit here and I want y'all to think that I'm rapping about this shit because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to glorify it. I'm really not, man. You know, I'm really not. Sometimes I listen to like some of my old shit and I get embarrassed. I'm embarrassed, I turn it off. Because I'm like, fuck, I don't want to talk about that shit. I don't want to talk about selling no drugs, man. You know, and I can have that realization now. But it was three, three children later, I'm a family man now. You would have asked me that shit two decades ago. <laughs> I would have fucking told you something else. I would have been like, fuck yeah, nah, you know what I mean? But like I told you, man, this industry will chew you up and spit you out, you know? For the early part of my career, I thought that's what I had to rap about. I had to do that to make money, you know? Like, who want to hear about Freddie Gibbs rapping about going to college and getting a degree, you know what I mean? And being like, my bro my little brother's a doctor, you know what I mean? I wake up every day. I, I don't envy him because that's my brother. I ain't got envy, for, you know, for my brother, but I'd be like, damn, dog. Like, it's more of me being proud of him because I'm proud of what he is. I feel like he's more of the shining star of my family than I am, you know? I feel like, really, nigga, I call it a lucky break. To be honest, like man, I'm 41 years old, bro. Most of my friends dead, dog, or in jail. Most of them, all like 80 percent of them, for real. You know, so when I rap about this shit, it ain't from a place of I want to spread a bad message. It's just like I don't know what else to rap about. I don't know what else to talk about. 
I don't want to talk about this shit in my music. Do you understand? Like the process of me writing a song, it's a it's a it's a difficult thing, bro. And you know why? Cause I'm not lying. I'm not lying. A novelist, Stephen King, or some shit like that, that nigga can go write a book and make millions writing about some fake shit that's gonna scare you. Like, I'm scaring you in my real life. It ain't, it, ain't a, it ain't a game to me. When I make a song, it's a difficult, it takes a lot of emotion out of me. I sit there for hours and, and like me now getting older, the process is even longer. But you know why? Because I'm thinking about it more. I'm thinking about, damn, should I say, should I say this? Should I say that? You know? When I was 20 years old, I didn't give a fuck about saying that or saying this. But now I'm, I'm I, like I got my studio in my house and my kids running around that motherfucker now. So I'm like, damn, my son gonna hear this, you know? So I gotta think about, I think about things like that. I'm cognizant of that now more so than I was before. So it's a difficult, it's a difficult thing, man. For real, dog. Like, I really put my heart into this shit because I love it. I love rap and I love making music. You know what I mean? But like, a part of me every day, man, I wish it was just, it's just a different subject matter. You know, this shit has brought me a lot of, a lot of good things for my family, you know, money, all of that shit. We can do whatever the fuck we want for the rest of our life. But it's also brought me a lot of pain, you know. It's brought me a lot of bullshit. I done had the shit. The rap game that brought me just as many enemies and shit like that as as the streets. You know, I done had to fight people doing this job. Shoot at motherfuckers, niggas shooting at me doing this job. This ain't no, this a dangerous motherfucking job, you know? But the record labels, Interscope, and all them, they ain't gonna tell you, Def Jam, all them, or whatever that is, they're not gonna tell you that. They're gonna send you in the field to go on this mission, but you don't always know what that mission entails, man. You know, this is such a street-oriented job, you know, that you can really get lost in, in that side of it. So, you know, I feel like that, uh, I don't know, I'm just a survivor of that shit, bro. My bad, I ain't getting involved. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Yeah. But you also ate lunch at Chez Panisse today. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Shout out to Chez Panisse. That shit was fire, hell yeah, that shit was fire, man. She killed it. That fried duck, whatever the fuck that was. Fuck that duck up like a mom. <laughs> Can I drink this shit? This oh, okay. I thought I thought this That's was, just a prop water. I thought it was sparkling water. Sparkling water. That shit nasty. My girlfriend, she drink that shit. It tastes like TV static. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> drink that shit all day long, leaving that shit in the house. Like, it's like, like, well, bitch, get a sprite. What the fuck is this? If Sam Pellegrino wants to give Freddie money to market their, you can take that out. TV static. <laughs> Your honest approach to your music is kind of reflected in the other art you've partaken in. You recently put in an, in an acclaimed performance of Down with the King as a rapper struggling with his relationship to the industry and art in general. How do you use your experience portraying the most personal aspects of your life translate to acting in this new art form? You know what? When I first got that um, Down with the King um, script, I was like, fuck that, I ain't doing that. Because I ain't, you know. I wanted to go into the um, into the acting game the same way I kind of went into rap. I didn't want to go into it um, stereotyped or pigeonholed or put in a box. You know what I mean? Like everything that I audition for, they always try to make me play the same type of thing. You know what I mean? Or a rapper, or a gang, or some sh stupid shit like that. So I was like, nah. When I when I seen the role of the rapper, I was like, I ain't doing that shit. But then when I read it and saw what it really was, I was like, damn, I really feel like that. You know what I mean? So then I was like, all right, this might be like one of the only opportunities I get to uh, be on camera that long by myself to show P 
people what I can do. So I took it and I took advantage of it because nobody else would put me in a film as the lead for that long. So I had to put myself in one. Same way the rap game. I put myself in this shit. You know. Has navigating sort of Hollywood uh, the film industry uh, been similar to the way that you've chosen to uh, kind of attack the, the music industry? Or do you have to take maybe a different approach to marketing? I think it's different. It's different also because we, when we started in music, I was 19 and you were like 21, 22. Yep. So we have like years of now, you know, just like growth from that, that we can kind of translate. It's a different game, but translate it into that world. And it's like, even with movies and stuff, we want to treat it the same way where it's about the quality and like the choices, whether he's choosing a role or we're choosing a movie we want to produce or something. It's, it's, we want to approach it the same way where it's like art first, quality first. How do we make something impactful beyond just like a money grab or uh, let's go do this just because we'll make some money or it's going to be big. It's like, let's, and, yeah, okay. no, it's going to say like his first movie he was in, he was in Cannes, you yeah. know, and A.O. Scott from New York Times said he was his favorite actor of the year. And that was Freddie's first movie. Because he played a rapper, but it wasn't like a stereotypical type of role. It was like, if you see the movie, it's like a super deep kind of character study. He could have played anything. He could have played a chef. He could have played a painter. It wasn't about the fact that he was playing a musician. That just happened to be what he was playing in the movie. It's, it was about this character, a fish out of water, you know, going into like a different environment. And I think... With Freddie, it's just like he approached that the way he approaches an album, where it's like he, he pretty much like you were in. You're, I don't know if you're still in the movie, but you 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 pretty much went full method in that one, I think. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Yeah, <laughs> I would say so. I mean, um, and like you said, like I mean, like um, back to his point when he said when we got in the music industry, we were you know in our early twenties, extremely young. So it's like now I feel like we got a different kind of knowledge going into the. Um, the film thing and you know if, if it's something that we got a huge passion for that we really want to do we got our own money we can make it ourselves you know it's just like same with music you know when we ran into every wall like I told y'all like my whole career I've been trying to get a record deal I didn't have that so every wall I ran into if I couldn't knock it down I just you know you just got to take the back street yeah take you know, the back street if there's know. like a traffic jam you just go around yeah, it's, it's always a way you know it's things that I want to do film wise you know I got I wake up with tons of ideas. That's how I know I can make a smooth transition in music when I do want to start doing music and just do film because I got millions and millions of ideas in my head to do, you know, and I know that it takes a lot to carry those out. But, you know, that journey, that, you know, that, uh, you know, that, 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 that just, you know, the whole, the whole mission is, you know, that's what, that's what keeps me going, you know, because I want to write movies. I want to, star in them, I want to direct, you know, I don't want to just, you know, having so much control of my music, I can't, you know, go into something else and not and relinquish control, you know, I got to be the, you know, I got to be in on everything when it comes to that, you know, so I'm all, you know, I'm all in, I'm ready to get it. Can we get some tequila? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, and then, uh, you um, this will be the last question because there's a lot of interesting sections. Uh, as a reminder, just uh, have your questions ready, so we'll come through, raise your hands, and we'll come around the mic. Um, and it should be a good panel. Um, thank you so much for taking the time for the conversation so far. Yeah, I appreciate y'all, man. I'm sorry for crying. That was some whole ass shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was some bitch ass nigga shit. But appreciate y'all for help get get help me get through that. Appreciate it. I used to cry at Berkeley when I waited too long to write my paper. <laughs> it was like three in the morning. I cried like a nigga that fought the class. <laughs> I still have I still have those nightmares where I'm late to class. Yeah, sorry. I 
Oh, uh, man, just really right now, um, just acting, you know, doing some film stuff right now, you know. Acting and producing films. Yeah, for acting and producing films. Got a couple of films coming up um, that I'm in that I've signed on to, so really focusing on that right now, you know, that's really the main thing. Um, I was just about asking this, but there's, there's that, that joke going around on social media about your resemblance to South Chile. Today is Don's birthday for real, dog. Like, I was Did you just, see they just ran into each other? I was just with him at the Lakers game. We went to the Lakers game and shit. And I and, and, and everybody was like, <laughs> like and I'm like I'm like, okay, chill, man. Like I know we're both dark skinned, it's all good, man. Like, yeah, yeah. But uh yeah, man, I love Don. That's like one of my um favorite people in the game, man. A mentor of mine. I can text I just I just texted him like hours ago, told him happy birthday. So he's one of my favorite people. Definitely one of the most talented people that I know. So you know, any energy or, or or knowledge or game that I can get anytime I'm around him, I soak that up, man. And you know, I, I love I love Don Cheeto. That's like a big brother to me. Wait, you expect any collaborations in the future? Hopefully, you know. Hopefully, people keep seeing me and him together, and they just cast us or something. So. <laughs> or if they don't, I'm just gonna make it myself, man. Yeah, you know, we you know we got our own bag over here. We do our own thing, you know. But uh. Or you guys need to start trading places. Hey, listen, I will go to work with Don Cheeto for sure. The war machine, come on. <laughs> Them niggas need to put me in Iron Man, let's go. I could like, I could be his little brother and steal the suit or some shit. Let's get it popping. Well, great to make you a conversation. Um, yeah. Now, any audience members have questions? Would you raise your hand? Yeah, that's fine. Can I give you All right. I guess it's a moment. Would you project? <laughs> Ready. Man, it's such an honor to be talking to you right now. Like, Thank you. I've been listening to you for so long, and I just... Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much for everything that you've done, from music to the music industry. Just thank you. Uh, just thank you. I, my question <laughs> is, um, so, oh, um, so rap and hip hop has become a commodity since its birth in 1973. I know we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of hip hop right now this year. So, um, you know, would you say that? You say you didn't, you don't want to be rapping about street life and girls and crimes and stuff like that, but with. But I will. You know, <laughs> with like record labels pushing a certain narrative that they push, um, and really only selling and making you know certain songs and certain topics present, would you say that you wouldn't have been successful, as successful as you are today, without rapping about those things? Probably not. Um, because um, I look at every uh, every artist um, in rap or you know in music period, it's, it's it's similar to like comic book characters or Marvel characters. You know what I mean? This is my character. I'm Freddie Gibbs. This is my you know like Wolverine ain't gonna stop. You know what I'm saying? Like sticking them things out of his hand. He gonna always have that shit. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I'm Wolverine. It is what it is. So I can't you know. It, it, it is. I, and I gotta, it's just your your truth. It's your yeah, reality. It's just, it's just what I am and who I am. You know what I mean. So I, I don't I, I don't regret none of that shit. You know what I mean. Like I don't regret. You know I, I love my life. I love where I'm at. I love what God put me. God sent me on this mission for a reason. You know what I mean. He gives his toughest battles to the strongest soldiers. So I don't regret none of that shit. You know what I mean. But you know looking back on it, I'd be like fuck. You know what I mean. It, it hurts, and it's just like. It, it hurts to make it now because, you know, like I said, I've grown, I, you know, it's come full circle. So it's just like, damn, man, like, I don't, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to, um, you know, be the same person that I was when I was 20 years old. Like, why, why would I want to do that? You shouldn't either. You know what I mean? When y'all when leave this motherfucking university, you should strive to be something bigger than what you are. And I'm pretty sure you do. That's why the fuck you're here. You're not here to be the same motherfucker that you was when you graduated high school. So it's just like, oh, yeah. And the other thing you said, 50 years of hip hop. Fuck 50 years of hip hop. First of all, like that 50 hip hop shit, 
That's the punk ass motherfucking uh, music industry dicks, booty eating ass niggas <laughs> that's trying to make this shit. They trying to age this shit because they trying to get this shit. They trying to knock this shit out of the paint. Be 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 careful of that shit. Like for real, fuck 50 years of hip hop. Do a motherfucker, uh, have you ever heard 50 years of rock? Or 100 years of jazz? Or, or, or 50 years of pop? You ain't never heard that. They trying to age this shit out because they want to get rid of it, my nigga. It's also, it's also a way for people to make money off it. That too, they trying to market. I ain't seen so many companies, really like, I ain't gonna even name no names, I might make some money with them niggas, but. <laughs> Niggas, niggas is taking advantage of 50 years of hip life. Fuck 50, I don't give a fuck. Why can't I drink soda on the 49th year? Exactly, like why can we celebrate 49 years of hip hop, bitch? It's like, you know, like fuck this. Like why y'all trying to put a number on this shit? It is what it is, my nigga. And you what's know? gonna happen in 51? Yeah, exactly, for the year for year, what the fuck? Ain't shit, hey look, that's bullshit. They trying to, you know, that lets you know that they trying to create an establishment and put us in a box and get rid of us, you know what I'm saying? Whatever they fucking feel like it. So it is what it is, man, they making, Artificial intelligence rap. I bet, look, man, y'all niggas can walk out of here and make a Freddie Gibbs album yourself. <laughs> I got like 12 of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, my voice is in, it's in the system now, so nigga, you can go make it your goddamn self. I don't even gotta do it no more, and that's what I'm saying. So, like, motherfuckers like me are, uh, you know, we a rare breed, and they trying to make it obsolete, you know? <laughs> hey, how's it going? So, one of my favorite songs that has come out with. I like that hat. You look like that nigga on uh, Dumb and Dumber Sea Bass. They be like, kick his ass, Sea Bass. <laughs> kick his ass, Sea Bass. <laughs> nah, I'm just fucking with you, right? <laughs> my question. <laughs> so, one of my favorite songs that has come out is Let's Talk About It with the DJ, and Kick Your Not Up. I mean, it's from Portland. I mean, me and Kate Tronada are like very cool. That's like one of my good friends in the music industry. So I, I don't know. I don't know if it's some brother, brother cold or something. I think we just dope ass niggas that just made a song, you know what I'm saying? And like Kate Tronada, I love him. Like I said, man, he's one of my favorite. You know, it's, it's, it's weird. It's like opposites attract me and that niggas was from two different, you know, uh, realms. And like, we, I think that whenever we come together and create music, it's a good thing. I love them. For and, that. I th and I think more so different than them being from different regions is they're all three outside of the box artists. You can't put Amine, K. Trinata, or Freddie in any kind of box. They can all do versatile, different things, you know. Freddie can make a trap song and make a song with Madlib in the same night. Nigga, I can And Amine can do the same thing. <laughs> I'm from Gary. Pro prove it. No. Right there. I want to say all type of dumb shit, but uh, <laughs> I've been Gary a million times. I'm your age. I used to fuck out in Chicago. I still do all the time on the streets. Life is up. What do you, I got a two-part question. One, what are you telling young Gary at 17th in Virginia that fucked up at his intersection? Like, you know what I'm saying? What do you tell him as the person you are now? And then two, how does it feel to be talking to a room full of squares in Berkeley? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love this shit. I, honestly, um, <laughs> man, I'm gonna keep it real with you. The fucked up part about what you just said it's like you someone I go back to 17th in Virginia and Gary and yeah, the crazy part about that shit is bro, I don't even see no kids no more, dog. I barely see a kid on the street. Like, when I was when I grew up there, we was outside playing, doing our thing, like it's that shit is like a ghost town now. So it's like, man, it really ain't nobody for me to talk to. The young kids in my neighborhood, like, them little motherfuckers is pulling up on me, teaching me how to put together glocks and sticks and shit like that. They do, like, they, they're far more advanced than where I was at 16. Like, nigga, I ain't know how to put, make no glock. Like, nigga, what? I had to go to the store and buy that. Like, these niggas making guns. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I gotta, you know, I don't, I, I, don't, I, I, I really don't know. And that's the fucked up part about this shit. Cause you know, a motherfucker can like, 
love you for your like rap persona and shit like that, but it's just like, you know, um, it's sad, but like a lot of like kids from like where I'm from, they're not gonna get to like hear me talk on this level. You know what I mean? They, I'm not, they, they, they're not gonna be able to get, I might not be able to get them in a room and, and talk to them like this and, and get my feelings to them like this. All they would know is what the fuck I'm saying on a song. So, you know, um, it's tough, you know, it's tough, you know, the, the communicating in the black community period. You know, between each other. That's why we killing. Each, that's why we kill each other so much. You know, that's why we so violent toward each other. I think it's the communication. You know, so it's tough. It's, it's, it's to answer your question. It's very tough for me to communicate with the youth and like people younger than me from my area. It's a hard thing. It's a difficult thing. Yeah, it is. Um, I think that you Um, my question is mostly for Lambo. Um, wow. Wow. <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> 20 year question. Um, <clears throat> I know you've been working, you know, you've been part of like the industry and music culture for like most of your life, but can you talk about a time or was there a time in your life where maybe you felt like you weren't necessarily like on that same track to be working in the industry or like being part of the culture? And like, if so, can you talk about uh, how you kind of like course correct it to probably like uh, get back on track and like continue to, you know, own your career, like kept in that direction. It was never really like my intention. It was just kind of like, just my natural, like life was always music. It was always like just music, movies, just since I was a kid, like I grew up, like me and my sister were watching MTV in the box and VH1 when we were like Comedy Central and Nickelodeon, all that when we were like, you know, five, six years old. Like I remember when like the Big Papa video premiered on MTV. I'm gonna sound old as hell. I do too, we were still the cable. <laughs> I remember it was the jam of the week on MTV. Me and my sister would watch that. And then on the next hour, we'd be watching Nirvana. And like growing up seeing that stuff, like in real time, being a kid, it was like what I had to do. You know what I mean? So just going to Berkeley, I didn't study music, I didn't study art but it was just what I was when I wasn't in class it's what I was doing you know when I was in my my apartment I was trying to find artists I was I was here during like the hyphy movement right shout out to Trackademics um and like Track. my dog like, like be, being here during that time like was so inspiring because like it was it was such like a scene it's hard to even explain like the energy that was here, but like Little B was like skateboarding past my apartment. You know, I tried to sign Little B to Interscope as a solo artist in like 2005, and they were like, "What the hell is this?" You know, and now everything sounds like Little B. You know, so like that's off track. But like, I don't know. It's always like since I was a little kid. Like my, I went to a Grateful Dead concert when I was five for like a six-hour concert. You know, like I'm lucky that my parents would like take me to these things. Like my dad bought me, he gave me like $10, like go get a CD. And I bought Ghetto Boys, We Can't Be Stopped. My first tape. And I used to stare at the cover and like just be disturbed by it while listening to it. Cause the nigga eyeballs yeah, hanging out with yeah, that yeah. motherfucker. But like, like I'm super like lucky that my parents were super supportive. You know, when I was 12, like they didn't, I was bumping Wu-Tang forever and they didn't take it away from me because ODB was cursing. They were like, cool, you know. Um, so I just feel like it was never like a plan. It was just kind of just what happened, you know? And I will say like going to Berkeley, the main thing, of course you have like your syllabus and your academics and everything, but I think the main thing I took from coming to Berkeley was like, you just like kind of learn how to manage your time and how to, what's important, what's not important. You know, like a teacher's gonna give you 50 books to read. They know you can't read every page of every book. It's like pulling out the important things in life and I feel like that's what I do to this day. It's like, it's not so much about hard work, like 24 hours a day working. It's like working smart, taking care of yourself and like just managing your time. Because if you like burn your, I know coming here, like you feel like you gotta burn yourself out. You have to like, all you have to do is work, but everything else when you're here, when you leave, you don't wanna regret not living life and not having time to take care of yourself and like, you know, take, we didn't even talk about mental health, but like 
2003 or 07, but like all that stuff is as important as doing your work and you know <laughs> passing your tests. So I'll say uh, I don't know. That's kind of abstract, but you get it. What college? <laughs> <laughs> Um, my question for you, sir, is how are you able to find yourself to get into different, you know, I, I would say, uh, industries? You know, you've been producing, you've done acting, uh, bring people together like Jamie, bring people together like, like Sadie. How are you able to find your, you know, time to be able to be a father too, and like, mass produce yourself to be able to just keep going in this industry where they just leave you as, I think that just talks shit and just being a black man in this industry where just ladies make this all huge for God. That right there. The labels, the the naysayers, the shit talkers, the I wake up to that shit every day, academics, everybody's probably some new shit about me today on the internet. You know what I'm saying? But like that that's what drive me because you know, I I'm such a I'm a competitive motherfucker. Like I like I can't tell I, I wake up thinking about competing with a motherfucker. Like, like you just mentioned JD. If I could slam dunk on JD every five minutes, I would, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wake up and be like, fuck you niggas. Like, I'm just to my own team. And I don't, I don't do that to them to hurt their feelings, no shit like that. I do that to make them competitive like me. Like, I'm, like my teeth is like, like, I'm ready to wreck some shit. I don't know, that's just, that's, 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 the, that's the fire in me. I, I, I need a little bit of, adversity, you know, to keep me going. Cause I feel like if everything just all like, huh? Like, you know what I mean? Like I, I, I need, I, I, I need you to hate. So I could, I don't know, <laughs> I, I, I need it. You know what I mean? I, if you, it's the fuel, you know what I mean? It, that, that, that shit drives me, you know what I mean? So um, just the, when a motherfucker tell me I can't do something, it make me want to do it times 10, you know what I mean? Times That's why 20. I always tell him he can't do anything. Right. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like, I don't know, it's just that competitive spirit in me, man. Like, I, you know, I try to channel that energy every day, and um, I feel like when I lose that, then I might as well just go retire. I might as well not do nothing, you know what I mean? But, like, that's what keeps me going in rap. You know, I need a motherfucker to tell me J. Cole rap better than me every day. I need a motherfucker to tell me I'm whack. I need a motherfucker to be like, oh man, you, you trash. You know? I needed Nas to beat me in the Grammy, even though he should have. He know I won that shit. <laughs> but if I would have... <laughs> but if I would have won that shit, maybe I would have got lazy. Maybe I would have been like, oh, I'm good. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't be in here talking to y'all right now because I, you know, I could have just fell off the map and uh, the average rap career last three years, my nigga. I think the hard part is like, you know what I mean? So the hard part of that too is that like we never take time to like sit and reflect on what we just accomplished or what we've accomplished. It's always what's next. Even right. when we're making an album, we never listen to it after it comes out. I don't. I don't know. It's always like trying to stay hungry and trying to stay moving forward. And we listen to that shit so much while we yeah, making it. Yeah, it's too personal. By the time you get it, I'm like, that shit old to me. I'll be like, what? y'all? I never what? listen to Pinata. Nah, I haven't. That album took us five years to make. The only reason I, li I do listen to it is because I got to perform it. Yeah. So I got to perform it. But like for the most part, it's like, I don't know, my albums, I love them. Like you said, they like, it's like a championship. I want, I got to go get another one. You know what I mean? That's great. You know, I could look at it on the trophy case, but I gotta go get another one. That's my mind state every time that I, you know, go into a project. We have time for about one more question. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, uh three questions. Yeah. White shirt. Uh, you know. uh, yeah, so um we have a big fan obviously. Uh, I wanted to talk about Alfredo. Um, in my opinion, the Alchemist is one of the best producers, I think, the Congress has ever seen. Travis yeah. Alchemist. Yeah. 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 I wanted to just ask, like, how the creative process was between you two. Uh, I mean, some of those beats, it's just like, you know, the selection and everything. Like, how, how did that work between you guys? Um, honestly, man, like, I was like, uh, 
I didn't know Alfredo was gonna be what it is, you know. How long did that album take? I probably made it in like two weeks, yeah. something like that, probably like 14 days, because it was just, to me, it was, it was just a bunch of freestyles, you know, it was like Alchemist beats, I was rapping on a bunch of, you know what it was? I was, so I did that shit with Currency, right? The Fetty shit, right? And I was so fucking pissed that Currency wouldn't shoot no videos or none of that shit. Like, he didn't do what he, like, I felt like he didn't do what the fuck he was supposed to do. Like, for that album, I was so fucking mad at that nigga for that shit. And I was like, man, this motherfucker, fuck this nigga. So the rage from that, I said, you know what? I'm gonna make a Fetty without that motherfucker. Because this motherfucker don't appreciate me. Fuck him. So I took, I carried that rage in the Alfredo and I made a classic. You know what I mean? Like I told you, man, sometimes I need a little bit of adversity, bro. You know what I mean? So fuck with me if you want to. You wanna fuck with me, you wanna poke the bear, you wanna poke the rabbit motherfucker, it's gonna be <laughs> bad for you, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, the more motherfuckers, I'm, like I said, man, I'm like Wolverine, you can't fuck me over. You know what I mean? So it's like, it, it, it is what it is, you know? Um, we also just pick really good beats in general. That too. <laughs> and and that was the beginning of the pandemic. You couldn't go anywhere. I, I, I could go anywhere, but I had a stripper pole in my house. <laughs> so I didn't need to go nowhere. <laughs> oh, we, 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 can, we, we can ask more questions if you want. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know when you have to kick them out of the room. My bad, I'm picking niggas and shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite rappers ever. Hey, bro. Spotify coming out, Dark Show number one. Damn. He was showing you that. I'm like, damn. I got two questions. One from you today and one from you today. What can we do to get straight and do, do right on the show? Oh, man. Stray was a freestyle on a Devin the Dude song. Yeah. Niggas couldn't clear the sample. Now it's just like <laughs> mixtape era. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Devin the Dude. That was that was literally just it was an instrumental at the end of a Devin album where he sings a hook and it's he must have been so stoned or something. There's no verses. It's just a hooks and like empty verses. So that was like 2009 at Drew Bird's house. I know. I'm gonna rap on that again. He just freestyled on it. I'm think I'm gonna redo that. I'm that was fire. This. Yeah. That shit was fire. And then Do Right was a burn one. That I don't know why. The, I don't know. See, man, you got to think, like, that 2000, era was, was 2008, crazy. 2009, we was just shooting, putting shit out. We were putting out, think about this, we were putting out free albums. We were making 18 songs and putting them out for free. Right. Before streaming, just yeah. to try to get signed or try to get someone to pay attention. Like, we had to put in hours and hours of work to put out a free body of work. So, free body so a lot of, of that stuff, like... It was just a different time. That, it was the, that, the that Wild time, West, the blog era. That time was crazy as fuck. It's like even um, artists on major labels had to put out a free album yeah. before they put out Just the to warm up for their album. Just to warm up. You had to do a whole fucking album. And the album. free album was usually better than the album. Yeah, motherfuckers like, oh, it's just a mixtape. That's just a mixtape shit? No, that's bullshit. That's an album, nigga. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? You putting time and work in it. That, it's like doing an album, so it's like... You know, that free album era was fucked up. You know what I mean? The industry was really getting over it. Now you got all these sites like live mixtapes and what's the other you shit? You can find mixtapes. everything, you know? You can find this shit, but are you getting paid? But sometimes it's like, the you have to just it's not even possible to do the paperwork because it's... It's so fucked it's up. It's years and it's years amazing. later. And, yeah. well, I mean, I, I, I still got a YouTube place right all the time, but my second question is... Somebody getting paid off this shit, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever uploaded it. Whoever uploaded it. Shout out to them. I, like I said, like you, you got you got turn up, you got the beat, you got you know ratchet, you got it all. But like my favorite, some of my favorite tracks of yours are like uh, uh, County Bounce, Soul Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I wanted to know from you, what are some of your own personal favorite songs? The last shit I made, like I like fucking um, Andre 3000 said it was a line on song on Rosa Parks. He said something like, "Baby boy, you only funky is your last cut." Focus on the past, your ass to be a has what? And I was just like, damn, that that really that that stick with me every time I make music. I'd be like, damn, like, shit, yeah, that shit was hard, but I gotta get. And, and this and this is the thing. I, I I say that to say this. I don't never try to outdo myself. 
Like, I don't listen to, like, Alfredo or Pinata or something like that. Like, damn, I got to make a better version of that. You know what I mean? I'm always, like, striving to be um, just the, uh, a, a better version of myself. You know what I mean? Not trying to... I, I'm never trying to outdo no... Or, 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 or topple a milestone that in, I already In had. the moment, too. Yeah, I'm all, it, 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 yeah, everything's created in the moment, man. So it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm like... Uh, Pinata represents where I was at that time. Alfredo represents where I was at, at that time during the pandemic. So it's like the music that I'm about to make right now is representing, you know, where I'm at right now mentally, physically, all spiritually, all of that. So, you know, it all got to be, you know, to me, it's all concurrent. Thank you. Yeah, Orange. Orange. I, I like that one. Uh, hello, Freddie. I'm a big fan of you. I've been listening to yeah, you. Nas Browns. Oh shit. Good <laughs> niggas trash. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I've been listening to your music for about a decade, since 2013. And I just wanted to say, um, out of all of your favorite producers, I mean out of all the producers that you work with, who is your favorite and who did you feel like complimenting yourself the most? Um careful. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, damn, um, I feel like everybody that I, that I work with, um, makes me sharper, it makes me better, you know what I mean, like, um, shit, I work with Alchemist one day and DJ Paul the next day and both of them in the same room together before, so it's like, you know, I feel like, I don't know, it's like, it's like playing Sonic the Hedgehog or Mario. It's like every stage or level is like a new boss, you know, to still kind of sharpen steel in that regard. So, but I think the best, the best moments is because these are your friends. Yeah, that too. The best, the best music that gets made, I feel like, is when it, these are like Mad Lib, Alchemist, DJ Paul. These are like real. Yeah, the homies. It's not like just send me a beat and I'm gonna rap on it. And I feel like that's what it is with music too. With me, man, like I'm gonna say like personal. Yeah, it be personal and it be real organic. Cause I done worked with like a lot of some top guys in the game. And I done, I done worked with some of the some guys who be like, whoa fuck, why didn't that music ever come out? Because it wasn't organic. I ain't like them motherfuckers. He was probably a bitch or some shit, you know what I'm saying? And it it, it don't it don't matter how big he was or how, you know, the name, you know anything of that nature, but it's like, man, if it, if it don't if it don't lock up, it just don't lock up, you know what I mean? Because I like to make music with people that I'm cool with. I mean, call me, whatever the fuck you want to call me, but that's just how I am, you know what I mean? And I don't like making music with you if you make music with niggas that I'm not cool with. I'm just old-fashioned like that. That's it's all about chemistry, too. You could be the Clippers, or you could be the Nuggets, you know? You could yeah. work with all the big names. Exactly. If there's no chemistry, it's not going to work. Exactly. Clippers got everybody, they ain't gonna do shit. 